any of the following candidates. Who would you select and what position would they best excel in? Guys, DC Glenn, Pete Babcock, and Jason London are going to plug in any of the following people into their own cabinet if they were commanders in chief. The departments available, Vice President of the United States, Secretary of State, Secretary of Treasury, Attorney General, Department of Defense, Department of Education. Again, the following departments, Vice President of the United States, Secretary of State, Secretary of Treasury, the candidates available they could select. Grover Cleveland, Harriet Tubman, Albert Einstein, William Shakespeare. And as I was trying to figure out who, what, when, where, why, in what century, and what they've done, and all the above, I kind of settled on balance. So I'm going to start with Secretary of Education, and I choose Albert Einstein. And you might be looking like, why the hell are you choosing Albert Einstein? He's going to be too much for everybody. He's not going to be able to, people are not going to understand what the hell he's talking about. Because you don't come up with the theory of relativity just by guessing it. You come in by studying history, putting the facts together, learning about science, and testing and testing and testing and coming to a conclusion. Now, I segue into probably want to go to uh, Benjamin Franklin for Secretary of the Treasury. I could do the ignorant answer because he's on the hundred dollar bill, but I'm not. And one of my heroes and one you know person that I adore is Thurgood Marshall because he had to learn the law before he could implement everything that he wanted to do. Secretary of Defense, I'm picking Winston Churchill. Because one, he's got the greatest quotes in history. <laughs> Two, he, you know, he had to deal with incredible stress. And he, you know, with his country being bombed every day. And, and then my secretary of state would be Nelson Mandela. Because Nelson Mandela was in jail for most of his life. And when he got out, he did not think vengeance. He was like, how can I bring all these fools together? So I think he would work well with Winston Churchill because if Winston Churchill wants to be too hard, Nelson Mandela could come at it from the diplomatic perspective. Well, for vice president, I'm going to start at the top. Um, I, I want somebody who has, has experience in leadership, um, somebody who can bring some compassion uh, to, the, to the country uh, and bring people together. Uh, and because of that, I would go with ne Nelson Mandela as vice president. You know, here's a person who he was born, uh, his father was a chieftain um, in, their, in his clan. And uh, when his father passed away, he was, a, he was permitted to assume that chieftainship uh, and he, he renounced it. For secretary of state, uh, I will go with uh, JFK. Kennedy understood the international scene. He understood how dangerous nuclear war was, the threat of it. For defense, I go like a really different direction. I'm gonna go with Mary Fields, because she's just like a fascinating individual. Uh, here she was born into slavery. Um, when, she, when she becomes free, um, and this, is, this is a big woman. She's six feet tall, weighs 200 pounds. Uh, when she's free, uh, she ends up in, in Montana uh, working and she she's kind of lives a hard life uh, to a degree. She, she drinks in the saloons with the men, she smokes cigars. Uh, and for education, I thought about Einstein. I thought that was the uh, you know a logical choice, but I went with Frederick Douglass. He, he went from a plantation situation where he went through terrible times went to Baltimore, worked in a household. Uh, the lady of the house helped educate him to begin with until her husband saw what saw was happening. He put a stop to it. Frederick Douglass had just now got a taste of education. So he, he's out in the streets and he's getting uh, these young white kids to teach him how to read and how to write. In my mind, I tried to say, well then, what if we took that person and it was right now, that same person with the same attitude and the right. same, um, uh, drive that they had. 
sort of on the same level as you guys picked a, a couple of the, the people that I, I had picked. I have a backup <laughs> a little bit um, you know, on Attorney General Third Third, Third, Third Marshall was I think the the, the greatest choice uh, there there was. Um, for me, other than that, you know, I, I went with Thomas Jefferson on that one in the sense of that he had a deep understanding of the law. He was. He was our premier writer at the time. I mean, everybody kind of fell back on him for his genius um, at his ability to write. And we all know that historically there were some things that it were that wouldn't uh, be so cool now. But but the fact that he was writing things that George Washington would take and he would share with his troops, and his troops were down, and then they would his writing would lift them up. And um, I think that you know he gave up his law practice to basically try to. Uh, be a man of the people. And, uh, and for me, on um, Secretary of State, the man who could charm the socks off of anyone, who had a great sense of humor, and that, but it was Benjamin Franklin, and you had mentioned him earlier. And so I think that he would be a great Secretary of State in the sense that he was, he was a, a great diplomat. Is reality always fathomable by logic? Is reality always fathomable by logic? I think it's hard to say that logic is always it reinforces reality. I don't. I don't think that's the case because there are cases like what I just said about the Earth being flat. You know, it, at a time in history, and, the, and the, there was no logic to say that it wasn't. Things change. We we know that uh, that like thirty to seventy percent of the universe is made up of dark matter, but but we can't define what dark matter is. So. And, and, and I was reading some article where it said human beings uh, generally make five to 10 uh, illogical decisions a day, or, or they make decisions based on faulty logic, you know, because they just either the unknown or they're reacting to something, a spur of the moment. Uh, so I guess my answer would be that you, you can't always equate logic with reality. And what happens is you go on an on, on, on autopilot yourself where you go i have no i have no control over this reality um because it isn't logical it doesn't make sense it's happening right in front of my face and it still doesn't make any sense and you can pinch yourself and pinch yourself and you still don't wake up and so is reality fathomable by logic yes uh, um I, I think it is but like i said i think it's a two-parter is, is reality fathomable all reality is fathomable and you can do things like that, change the color of your hair, do things like that. But if you're going to say, I really want to be taller, and what am I going to do? Then you be like Stallone and just wear some big thick boots <laughs> or something like that. But uh, trying to force reality to be something that you want it to be versus logically looking at it for what it actually is, is something that is, is helpful. But, you know, can you manifest things? With your, with your hopes and your dreams and your minds, you, you can, um, but there has to be action put towards it. You have to sort of take that first step to get to that point, so. Correct, I watched, I grew up watching Star Trek and this question is perfect because all you gotta think of is Captain Kirk and Mr. Spock. How many times have we heard Spock say, but Jim, that's illogical, right? And Jim was like, look you big dummy, because of his experiences, because he puts a human feel to it, emotion, uh, experience, common sense, right? Because a lot of us have common sense, but a lot of people don't have common sense. Social media, you know, young people do social media because they want to be stars. They want attention, right? Well, seems illogical, but if you go back 20 or 30 years when we were young people think about the dumb stuff we've done it really comes down to the person and it comes down to the choices that we make to take logic and help somebody else see a real reality right so that's why i talk like i do because i think backwards right i thrive in the bizarre world because i'm trying to figure out solutions i'm not i could care less about the problem i want the solution and my goal is to help people understand that you can change your reality and logic can help you do that.